Hi, I'm Karen Bosick with Ion Sun Valley. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're at the Community Library's Regional History Museum in Forest Service Park in Ketchum. And the reason we're here is that Mary Tyson, who is the Director of Regional History, and her assistant, Nicole Potter, have put together a very interesting new exhibit focusing on Native Americans in the Wood River Valley. Mary, tell me how this came about. Well, we, um, we have always thought that, uh, that we should do an exhibit on um, Native American experience, Native American history in the Wood River Valley. Uh, we didn't think we had very much um, in the way of artifacts, objects, um, uh, documents in our collection. Um, this map is uh, from the uh, Johnson's family atlas. It was a, it's an atlas that got published yearly and was probably sold door to door um, to a lot of people in the United States. So this particular edition has, is the first time that Idaho was named as the Idaho Territory, um, was named in an atlas, um, I believe the first uh, in the country, um, this, this particular edition, this particular year. Um, and this is 1863, so we smack dab in the middle of the Civil War. 1863, yes. So let's see where we are. Oh, the Big Wood River. I see the Big Wood River here. So we're here somewhere. Yeah, so this is including the, the names that we had back in 1863. Um, so Fort Hall um, was, a, was the fort. Uh, there's um, the Malad um, River. So things are drawn differently mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> than they are um, drawn today. Boise uh, has two E's. Yep. We got Fish and Falls down where Twin Falls is today. Interesting. Yep, it is. Uh, um, and so, and it also shows very, um, very limited settlement. There's, um, uh, there's the evidence of reservation territory, Nez Perce, oh. uh, Umatilla, Lynn, Douglas, um, Curry, mm -hmm. and, uh, a, and so this is Washington um, territory, and then the state of Oregon was mm -hmm. a state. And I see while Haley is not on the map, Pierce City, where we discovered gold first in Idaho, is on the map. So Florence, which was a big mining town near McCall. McCall Potter is the regional history librarian. She helped Mary unearth a lot of the manuscripts, pictures, and maps that we have in this exhibit. Nicole, what were a few things you found that interested you? Sure. So behind me are the Eugene Ants photographs. Um, Ants photographed the Wood River Valley um, at the turn of the 20th century. He photographed from Redfish Lake down through Fort Hall. Uh, the four Ants photographs we decided to highlight in this exhibition were all taken of Native Americans at Fort Hall. Um, and they are just one of the two examples we have in our exhibition of Native Americans in the valley at that time, um, which is why we decided to pull them. Um, so we did blow one up. And these three are originals, so they're originally three by threes, um, so they're quite small photographs, which is why we wanted to really highlight this one. Um, then we also chose two Orrin Curtis photographs. Um, Orrin photographed at the turn of the 20th century as well. Um, we don't know much about him. Unlike Ants, who we know was a professional photographer in the area, Curtis, we just have one of his scrapbooks and a little bit of information about the time he spent here. Um, he worked at a local hardware store in Haley where he displayed some of his work. So these are photographs of Native Americans in Haley. Um, so this would be where the diner is out in Haley, where this photograph is taken. So modern Shorty's, diner. Yes. Shorty's diner? Yes. So like where Shorty's the Haley would have been the yes. shop is? Yes. Oh. And we wow. know that this is in the fall because there's a rodeo sign up, um, and the rodeo always took place in the fall in Haley at that time. And look at the dirt road. Yes. And then this is um, just a field outside of town. We don't have an exact location for that one. Uh -huh. um, but it was really wonderful to look through the scrapbook and see these images um, from old Haley. You wonder where she's running off to. Mm. <laughs> That's quite something. Nicole, 
I understand you found a lot of your information in the Wood River Times, which was published between 1882 and 1915. Tell me about the scare. Yes, so this is an incident that began in 1897. Um, Native Americans were gathering on the Camas Prairie, which is down near Fairfield, Idaho. Um, and this is where they gathered Camas roots um, and flowers, and this had been done for a millennium before. But now there were frontiersmen who had settled in that area, and they were scared by the Native Americans. They were worried of an uprising or another Indian war, which weren't too far in the past at that time. So they raised the alarm and the U.S. Army brought in men from Montana, Colorado, um, other parts of Idaho um, to fight off this Indian attack, this supposed attack. Um, but they got off the train and they realized there was nothing to fear. So it was a bit of an embarrassment for everybody involved, from the frontiersmen to the army. And they did send the Native Americans back to the Fort Hall Reservation, even though they had done nothing wrong. Uh -huh. but and that's near Pocatello. Yes. Um, and then the following year, the Native Americans came again to gather the canvas root. Um, an article ran in the paper that there was not a scare this time. Uh, so it was a little bit of a PR cover-up in 1898. Um, so the article read that while the frontiersmen did not welcome the Native Americans and they were overly enthused about them being there, they did not want to have another conflict with them. Mm -hmm. And of course, for the Indians, it was just observing what they had done a tradition. for centuries. Yes. Part of their food stuff and all that. Yes. I noticed, Nicole, we have something here called uh, an advertisement for Dr. Clark Johnson's Indian blood syrup. Was there really blood in that syrup? Do you have any idea what was in it? Um, so, unfortunately, Dr. Clark Johnson, who I do not think was a doctor, did not publish the ingredients of his blood syrup. I did look into that. Um, it seems to be um, a type of snake oil, so a medication that claimed to cure everything from liver disease to rheumatism probably really didn't do much and really played on the mysterious um, qualities of Native Americans as the non-white population saw them. Um, so I suspect it wasn't approved by the FDA. <laughs> One of the things Mary and Nicole were able to do is go through some old court cases that they really hadn't had a chance to study before. And among them was this very horrific case involving two white men and an Indian woman. Tell me about this. So the case of Carrie and Fowler began in July of 1906. Um, Carrie and Fowler were part of a group of five men um, who reportedly raped a Native American woman named Mary. However, only Carrie and Fowler were charged in the fourth district court in Haley, Idaho. So we followed their case in Haley, um, and they were convicted to five years in federal prison in Boise. So we can look at Boise Penitentiary records, and we saw that they were admitted to the prison there. Uh -huh. However, on their behalf, um, there were two appeals filed by their attorneys. Uh, the second one was accepted, and the case was moved from district court in Haley to the Idaho Supreme Court. Um, so we do have a copy of the brief of appeal that went to the Supreme Court, um, and we read through it. And basically, a big part of the appeal was, um, was that the Indian woman, Mary, was over 30 years in age, and she had accepted $5 from the men. So that's why they thought the case should be removed from court and the men should be set free. We are not sure if the case ever went to court at the Supreme Court of Idaho. Um, after that, it kind of dries up. We see Karen and Fowler coming back to Haley um, and being released um, in April. And there's really no record of them after that or the case. We do know that it was highly unusual for this case to go to trial in the first place. And that is not unusual for the men to walk at the end. I hope you enjoyed that peek at our past. And I hope you'll come down to the Community Library's Regional History Museum, which is located in Ketchum Forest Service Park, and see the exhibit for yourself. In addition to this exhibit, there are plenty of others, including an exhibit detailing Ketchum's rich railroad history and, and the wonderful ski history that began with the creation of Sun Valley Resort in 1936. The museum is open from 1 to 5, Wednesdays through Saturdays, and admission is free. 
I'm Karen Bosick with Eye on Sun Valley. Until next time, I'm keeping my eye on Sun Valley for you. I'm Derek Agnew, General Manager of Zenergy Health Club and Spa, and I want to take you inside and show you what we've done with our new Pivot Studio, which is going to blow you away. The therapists tell me that Pivot really is the game changer. It fills that final gap that we were missing at Zenergy, things they could not do in our main gym. The recent addition of the Pivot Studio has meant wonders to me as a physical therapist. I can now take care of the most vulnerable post-operative patient, but now I can include programming that challenges the most elite athlete. Better food, better price, better service. Atkinson's Market, supporting local farmers since 1956. I moved out to Idaho four years ago, so I met a lot of people and I really, really like it here. In New York, I was always sort of introverted. When I came out here, that no longer was me. I became extroverted because the people here are so friendly and warm. You know, if you don't have something like that that brings you into other people's lives, it takes a long time to get to know people.